Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. You are our celebration all the time. You are our joy. You are our strength, our secret. We give you all the glory for this special season that you have brought for us. Not just for Ross, not just for myself and my wife, myself and mommy and our family, but for your church and for your people. Because you have established us as a symbol, a channel of your grace. We thank you. We give you all the glory and honor. In 25 years, you have taught us things. You have taken us through things. We have learned from you. We are still learning from you. And Lord, as I share few of the things you have taught us, let the Holy Ghost take over this ministration for the redemption of families, for the renewal of families, for the restoration of families, for the establishment of the purpose of God in our families. That our families will celebrate joy, peace, unity, and victory in the name of Jesus. Let the word come with clarity. Let there be an unmistakable grace, accuracy in the spirit, showing us what we should do, pointing our attention to our responsibility. And we receive grace to obey. Thank you, Father. Let it be a new beginning for families. Let it be a new beginning for husbands, for wives, for children, that every family will fulfill God's purpose for their life. To the glory of your name, encourage us, strengthen us, teach us, correct us, empower us, advise us, counsel us, and help us to connect to your wisdom. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's be seated. You know, after this ministration, I'm going to minister to families here. And I want you to get ready. I have a special, I have a special word for the women. I have a special word for the women. After this ministration. I have a special word, a special counsel for the women here. It's a full package that God has brought for you today. And I know your life will not remain the same. As I share with you the word of God this morning, there are two things I want to share. Number one, I want to share what God told us about family. Along the line, as he continued to teach us in 25 years, there are things you will never learn in school. There are things you will never learn anywhere. But you learn them under God. And as you go through them, they become the critical wisdom. That becomes your secret of victory in life. And I want you to listen to this wisdom. When you are hearing wisdom, it is better to hear it from people that have passed through it and experience it. Because whatever you have experienced is what you can impart. You cannot give what you don't have. So when you are privileged to listen to wisdom from people that have gone through things in that area, it is your opportunity for impartation. And I want you to be very wise. I'll tell you a story before, and I'll tell you again. Especially when you are privileged to be under the ministration of an authentic anointed man. Every experience he's sharing is your opportunity for impartation. Because every experience carries a grace and a spirit behind it. The lives of servants of God are ordained as example and pattern for us. 
It is not by mistake that God put pastors in front of his church. When God put pastors in front of his church and anoint them, they are supposed to be a grace connector to God's people. So that what they have passed through become a grace that flows to God's people. There are many things that God will take your pastor through for your sake. So when he's sharing that experience, don't despise it. Because once you despise it, you disconnect from deep grace. I'll tell you a story. I have a son. He himself told me this. Every time I share my experience as a student, how by the act of the operations of the Spirit of God, I see questions before the question, before the exam day, two weeks before, I would meet myself in a class and somebody that I didn't see his face all through will write questions on the board. And when I wake up, I always remember those questions and I will write them down. And it is always two weeks before exams. And out of all the questions, severally, some of these questions that will come out in the exam are word for word. Severally. That's a divine encounter. I enjoyed that through my academic training up till my master's exams. So, there are no questions that actually catch me unaware. And I discovered that grace came when I entered the university. That grace came in the university. I didn't have that experience in my secondary school and all that. It's when I got to the university that that grace came. And I didn't have any experience of carryover. I didn't have experience of failure. No failure, no carryover, nothing. Face it, pass it, face it, pass it, face it, pass it. So I tell people I have never failed any course in my university education. Not one. Not one. I was ministering to some set of youth in a church about two weeks ago in the night. And I was ministering to them. And I told them, one of these days, I will bring all the, uh, all the question paper I have written from my first day in the university up to master's, I'll bring it to church. I'll show you. I don't know if I've shown you people here before. Maybe one of these days I'll bring them. I write the dates of the exam. I'm talking of since 1991. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Up till 1997. Because those are the span of my up till master's degree. Okay? All those, they are there. They are still with me up till today. Even the test is there. If it is printed, I will file it. And I didn't fail one. I didn't fail one. Not one. So each time I'm sharing that testimony, this young man will be saying in his heart that it's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. And he kept writing why he kept failing. He kept sitting for work. He kept failing. He kept failing. Sometimes they will not even see his result. Every time I share that a testimony was the opportunity he needed to connect to that grace. But since he despised that grace, God is not dealing with our facial expression. He's dealing with your internal disposition. That is what determines who gets what as far as God is concerned. Is somebody hearing me now? That's what determines who gets what. It's not our facial expression. If distributions go by our facial expression, many people will get what they do not deserve. But God deals with our heart. The disposition of your mind is what determines. Your attitude to what I'm sharing determines either you're going to partake in the grace or not. And one day, after Bible study, the Holy Ghost struck him and he came to me and told me, Daddy, this is what I've been having. Every time you share your experience about your academic uh, performance and all that, I say, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. And I ask him, do you now know it is possible? He said, yes, sir. I said, Neil, I prayed for him. 
he never, after that prayer, the exams he wrote, he passed. He's in the university today. What would have happened if he didn't, if he didn't take the step he took? Probably he would have been writing it and writing it and writing and writing it. Any grace you despise will connect you to disgrace. Do not do it. Are you hearing me now? Now, because we have fake pastors, that has made many people misbehave. We still have authentic pastors that God sent. And you are blessed of the Lord. Your pastor is one of those authentic we have in this end time. So you should know how to connect to grace. Are you hearing me now? So some of the things I'll be sharing with you today is one, to see your family as a tool in the hand of God. Family, a tool in the hand of God. That is one lesson God has taught us in 25 years. Family, a what? A tool in the hand of God. Family, a what? A tool in the hand of God. God is the one that established family. Family is a divine institution. We are going to give account to God how we run our family. A family must be run under the leadership of God. A family must be run by the principles of the word of God. A family must operate by the principles of the word of God. Because God is the institutor of that institution. If I have to say it that way. Is that okay? So you don't have just have a family just because you, are just, you just want to have a family. Or you are looking for a woman to sleep with. Or you are looking for a husband to sleep with. Or you are just want to be Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so. Or you just have to have children. No. Family is a what? A tool in the hand of God. Somebody say family. A tool in the hand of God. This is some of the things that God showed us, taught us, and it has helped us to have a proper disposition to family. It has helped us. It has helped us. It has given us an understanding of family. So we took our family completely away from the negative influence of culture. From the negative influence of the negative examples we have around us. And then we situate our family in the plan of God. And then God began to teach us that every family that God has ordained is a tool in the hand of God. That's the first thing I'm going to share with you. And then the second thing, I will be looking at God's goal for your family. What is the goal of God for your family? I believe this teaching is going to help everybody that is part of a family. It's going to help every married person. And I believe it's also going to bless every single person. Every single person should now begin to have a picture of the kind of family that God wants them to have. And the kind of person you will become to have what you desire. Is that okay? Is that okay? Because of the experiences of people, most of which are very negative, many people have given up on family. Many people have given up on family. Husband and wife are not together in love. Some people are living together like cat and mouse. There is no unity. There is no love. There is no understanding. They are not living life together. They are not growing together and things like that. Because of several experiences that are negative. But let me tell you, that's not the plan of God. Did you hear what I'm saying now? That's not the plan of God. That's not the plan of God. For those of us who are not married, the journey starts with your authentic salvation. When you are born again, make sure you do not deceive yourself with that born again. Because once you deceive yourself with your born again experience, you will reap the fruit of that deception all through every other thing you, you do in your life. If you are a lady, 
you are not born again, but you pretend to be born again, you are going to come across a brother that is also not born again, that is pretending to be born again. And by the time the two of you get married, even though you are in church, you will have problem. Are you hearing me now? Because the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what will the what righteous do? So, get born again thoroughly. Get born again thoroughly. And maintain your righteous work with God. That is the beginning of it all. The Bible says, a beautiful face is good, oh, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feared the Lord should be praised. Now, the same thing is applicable to the man. Height is good. Complexion is good. Money is good. Education is good. Are you hearing me now? Every other thing that you see in a man that you like is very good. But the most important thing is a man with the fear of God. You can cope with a man that has the fear of God. The fear of God will bring money. The fear of God will bring every other thing. But if you get every other thing and you don't have the fear of God, that man will bring you sorrow. That man will bring you sadness. No man is good except people that are born again and people that allow Jesus in their life. So everything we celebrate today is not our wisdom. It's not our knowledge. It is not for you to say, ah, daddy is trying. Ah, mommy try and things like that. We are celebrating the fruit of righteousness. Are you hearing me now? We are privileged to know God. I was born again at the age of 12. My wife got born again at the age of 18. And from that time, we never looked back. We were moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. We didn't deceive ourselves. We didn't pretend to be born again. We were thoroughly born again. We were practitioners of the word of God. We had our mistakes. We had our fault. But under the cover of grace and the mentorship of the Holy Ghost, the difference is what? Is clear. Is somebody hearing me now? Very, very important. So everything we celebrate is a product of God's grace and a product of God's power. But that is also available to you. Even if you are married, there can be a positive turnaround. You can give your life to Jesus. Nobody can try to be good. No human being can try to be good. There is a spirit in man. And the spirit of God grants him what? Inspiration. Are you hearing me now? Everyone born under the flesh wants to misbehave. Wants to mess up. Are you hearing me now? But it is when you become born again and you are practicing the truth of the word of God, you will find peace in your life. I tell people, as a lady, never manage any man that doesn't have the fear of God. Never, as a man, never manage any woman that doesn't know Christ. That is the foundation. Are you hearing me now? So say, my family is a tool in the hand of God. I'm praying that your family will not be a tool in the hand of the devil. That your family will be a tool in the hand of God. Your family will be a tool in the hand of God. This is one thing that God has taught us in 25 years. And that's what I'll begin to share with you. Write this number one. Family is the original plan of God for his operation on the earth. Family is the original plan of God for his oppression on the earth. God has something to do on the earth. God has something to do on the earth. God wants to establish his purpose. God wants to multiply his knowledge. God wants to establish the culture of heaven on the earth. But how does he plan to do it originally? Somebody say originally. Now, we wouldn't have needed Jesus coming to bring us redemption. Redemption is an alternative plan when the original plan failed. Did you hear me now? Redemption is an alternative plan when the original plan failed. The original plan is family. Somebody say family. 
Adam, Eve, and their children. That's the original plan of God. But before that plan started, the devil messed it up. Family failed. So when family failed, there is need for redemption. Jesus had to come. Are you hearing me now? And Jesus came. After he came, he redeemed us. And then God moved into a spiritual family called the church. So you discover that the first plan of God for every creature that he created is the family. Nobody dropped from heaven. Yes or no? Everybody belongs to a family. You came through a family. It is the plan of God. Family has a place in your life. God wants family to do something to you. But for most of us, family failed us. Some of us are born to irresponsible fathers. Some of us are born to irresponsible mothers. Irresponsible in the sense that they don't know Jesus. So our upbringing is with a lot of sadness and stories that are again, that are far away from the purpose of God. Then God established church. After church, God brings governance. Everything God was doing was just a plan of God to establish his purpose. So the first thing I want you to know is that family is the original plan of God for his operation on the earth. You don't have a family because you want to have a family. You, God gave you a family because he has something to do on the earth. Don't regret where you came from. God, that's part of God's plan for your life. God always operates on the earth through families. You can trace it from Adam to Noah to Abraham and then to the church. Family is a divine joker through which God moves his purpose progressively from generation to generation. Family is a divine joker through which God moves his purpose progressively from generation to generation. Tell somebody, thank God for family. Say it again, thank God for family. That's how you begin to see family from now on. This is defining family in God's perspectives. Family is a divine joker through which God moves his purpose from generation to generation. God moves his purpose progressively through family. God moves his purpose progressively through family. You hear the God of Abraham? You hear the God of Isaac? You hear the God of Jacob? The same God is moving his purpose progressively from generation to generation. Is that okay? So family is not a means to satisfy our carnal lust. Family is not a means to boost our ego. Family is a tool in the hand of God to fulfill his purpose. Thank God for the days of my father. The purpose of God moved in his day. When it was time for him to go, he left. He had me and several other people to continue the purpose of God. That's the plan of God. Nobody will live forever. So God brought in family for the continuity of his purpose. It's not just the perpetuation of my name or the perpetuation of your name. It's for the perpetuation of his purpose. When you see, that, when you see people having, they say, they say, well, I will have four children. And all the four children turn out to be female. And then he said he has not gotten a child. That is a man that doesn't have an understanding of family. And they say, you have children. And I say, all of them are girls who will carry my name. Hear me, everybody. It is not about your name. It is about his purpose. Did you hear what I say? It is not about your name. So, after four children, and all four are female, he now brings complication into his life. He goes out to go and sleep with another woman. That's the beginning of his battle. And then he sleeps 
maybe with two, three of them. And then the three of them gave back to male. And they go and watch out. Those male, they will never come with the umbrella that God has started. They will be a vagabond and a thorn in the flesh of the one inside. That is what happened to Abraham. Up till today, our world has not been delivered from the evil effect. So you now see rivalry. You now see battle. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You now see all kinds of things. That is a complication brought into the life of a man to pervert the purpose of God for the family just because a person does not understand that family is not for the perpetuation of the name of an ancestry, but of the purpose of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Did you hear what I'm saying now? So both female and male are children. Whichever one God gives you, it is for the perpetuation of the purpose of God. Name will disappear. Purpose will stand. Did you hear what I say? Name will disappear. This is one understanding that God gave myself and my wife. We are not working for a name. We are working for the purpose of God. We are, doing, we are working to pass down that purpose to our children. So that they can take it, male or female, they can take it to the next generation. Every time we have issues, that purpose becomes our center of resolution. We are not going to walk away because there is a purpose to fulfill. Are there hard times? Yes. Are there time of challenges? Yes. But beyond the challenges is that purpose in front of us. I'm praying you will not fail God in your own, in your own time. It's like a relay race. How many of you know that any leg can spoil the whole game? Don't spoil the game for the people coming. Don't make life more difficult for your children by the way you are living your life. I have a covenant with God. I will live in such a way that life will be easier for my children. By my own stupidity, I'm not going to bring complications to their life. Because it's about the purpose of God. It has nothing to do with my name. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Somebody say purpose. So family is the original plan of God for his operation on the earth. God always walked through family. Family is a divine joker through which God moves his purpose. Not my name, his purpose. Are you hearing me now? His purpose. Progressively. From what? From generation to generation. They say three generations will not suffer. That is if they know the purpose of God and they are following it. If they know the purpose of God and they are following it, three generations will not suffer. The yoke of suffering will be broken. Poverty will be broken. And then things will begin to get better in the next generation. Get better in the next generation. But if they don't know the purpose of God. And they are not working by the principles of the word of God. One million generations will suffer. It will only get tougher in the next generation. It will get darker in the next generation. Only with God you have light. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Is somebody hearing me now? So God gave us that understanding. God gave us that understanding. Family is not a means to satisfy my lust or ego, but a tool in the hand of God to fulfill his purpose, to transfer and perpetuate his purpose from generation to generation. I am praying that God will help you to do well in your own leg so that you won't spoil the game for the entire generation. May you do well in your leg. May you do well in your leg. If you have made mistake in your leg, turn your mistake to instruction for your children. Don't hide it. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Let your mistake become a message. Don't be ashamed of your mistake. There is no perfection in man. There is perfection in God. 
Our problems start when we are trying to hide our mistake. Or when we are trying to justify it. Or when we are trying to make error a doctrine. Did you hear me? Do you know it was a mistake for Abraham to have slept with Hagar? How many of you agree it was a mistake? Why was it a mistake? Was that the plan of God? Any deviation from the plan of God is a mistake. No matter the circumstance, once there is a deviation from the plan of God, it is a what? A mistake. When mistake has happened, open up to your children. This that you see me do is a mistake. Oh. I didn't know. This, this, this. Don't do it. Oh. If you do it, this is what will happen to you. This is my experience. Turn your mistake to a message so that the next generation can be better. That is when your memory will be preserved. Is somebody hearing me now? Because everybody will be finished one day. But we will leave behind a memory. And my pray for you, may you leave a blessed memory behind. May your children see your life as an instruction for them. May your life be a blessing to them. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. Number two, family is a means through which God ensures man's blessing. These are the things God wants to ensure. Family. So family is the means through which God ensures, number one, man's blessing. When God wants to bless you, he establishes a family for you. How many of you have heard when they say two are better than one? Have you heard that? Two are what? Two are what? How many of you are listening to this teaching? Shout hallelujah. Two are always better than one. They have a reward for their labor. That's the word of the Lord. So family is the means through which God ensures the following. Number one, God ensures man's blessing. Number two, God ensures man's fruitfulness. Fruitfulness through family. Fruitfulness. Number three, God ensures man's multiplication. That's the miracle of multiplication. Family is that miracle that man will multiply on the earth. Thank God for family. If there is no family, man would have become extinct. Yes or no? Man would have become extinct. But family is the means. Somebody said the means through which God ensures man's multiplication. Number next, man's replenishing. Man's replenishing. Replenish. Family is God's means of doing that. Number next, man's dominion. Man's dominion. Family is the means through which God establishes man's dominion. Man's dominion. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Through which God... I was looking at a family on Facebook. The husband is a lawyer. I think senior advocate of Nigeria. The wife is a justice. A senior judge for that matter. And they, are, they have about six daughters. Not one male. All of them are senior lawyers. All of the six are senior lawyers. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's family. Somebody say that's dominion. Talk to me. Say dominion. Now, if they know God, which I have not confirmed, but if they know God, if they are born again, if they have their foundation in Christ, that will be super dominion. You will see the family dominating in every area. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You see, such that even if after the expiration of the life of the head of that family, it is not ended with God's program in that family. That's the plan of God. So when God was establishing family, he was thinking dominion. Now listen to this teaching very well. You will now see why the devil hates family so much. How many of you agree with me that the devil hates family? 
talk to me. E shufe yi andagbe baba nyowa. Nte shufe ni ye. All this uh, baby mama is a satanic creation. Baby mama is a You see young, young men today, they will make money, but they will have different baby mamas. And none of them will be staying with him. No proper family constitution. That is a satanic creation. It is a bastard creation from the pit of hell. It is a perversion. That's not the purpose of God. And look at that kind of arrangement. Number one, it does not include responsibility. Yes or no? It does not include correct love. Correct love. Authentic love. It does not include commitment. And it does not include accountability. So, man will only be living on the earth like a beast. The difference between man and animal are what I have mentioned. Responsibility. True love. Commitment and accountability. If we can't find those four things in the life of anybody, he is an animal. And that's what the devil wants. Is somebody hearing me now? So that's why, because of the things that God wants to establish and ensure in the life of men, through family, that's why the devil hates family. Most of the problem that some of us are facing in our family may not even be because of you. May be because of what God wants to establish through that family. Okay? Dominion. And then victory on the earth. So family is the means through which God ensures man's blessings. You got that? Man's fruitfulness. What is the next? Man's multiplication. Man's what? Replenishing. Man's what? Dominion. And man's what? Victory on the earth. Victory on the earth. Do you know that anything God is interested in, the devil is also interested? That's why the devil is waging war against the family constantly. That's why the devil is trying to prevent everything God is trying to ensure. That's why the devil is perverting the family so that he will not be able to establish the following blessings for man. The devil is a chronic hater of man. A chronic hater of God. And everything God is establishing for the fulfillment of man, for the joy of man, for the blessings of man, the devil come after it. Every time I see a family break down, my heart breaks. Because it's a terrible setback for the purpose of God on the earth. How many of you know we have a beautiful world if we have beautiful families? How many of you know that? Because all of us came from a family. If we have beautiful family, godly family, we are going to have a godly society. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. I hope we're still together. Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and what? And female created he them. Anywhere you see male and female, you are, you are seeing family. Yes or no? You are seeing family. It's either a male or a female. Look at verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said to them, what did he tell them? Be what? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen. That's why God will always provide for your family if your family is under God. When you walk under God, your provision for you as a family is divinely guaranteed. Look at verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you. I have what? I have what? It's not I will. No. I have given you every herb, bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. 
and every tree in the which is a fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you, it shall be for what? For meat. Somebody said divine provision. God always take care of his institution. Provided you maintain it as his institution. He will take care of it. Number three. Family is the means through which God intends to raise and perpetuate God, godly seed from generation to generation. Family is the means through which God intends to raise and perpetuate godly seed from generation to generation. Family is the means through which God intends to raise and perpetuate godly seed. Somebody say godly seed from generation to generation. So there are two things God wants to do with, with the family. One, to raise godly seed. Two, to perpetuate godly seed. God can't do it in another way. That is his original plan. To raise godly seed, to perpetuate godly seed. What are the, who are the godly seed that Bible is talking about? The children. The product of our union. The children that came out of our loins. If the family is in order and they are under the umbrella of divine ordination, they are supposed to be a godly seed. Watch out. If your seed are not godly, something is wrong with your family. Hello, somebody. Are we together? If your seeds are not godly, something has been wrong with that family. The setup is not divine. It may be because ungodly seeds are products of perversions in family. And perversions can come when the man who is the head of the family is not fulfilling his head as a godly head. It's not fulfilling his destiny as a godly head. To be a head of a family is a divine office. It's a divine office. What did I say? Talk to me. And a divine assignment. It is not for fun that God made you a man. And gave you a wife. God is calling you to an assignment. God is calling you to office. It is better for you to succeed as a husband than for you to succeed as a doctor, than for you to succeed as a lawyer, than for you to succeed as a businessman. Did you get what I'm saying now? But let me tell you, once you succeed as a husband, you will automatically succeed in any other thing you do. Because there is a grace that flows from the office of a husband. There is a grace that flows from the office of a father. Why will I be called a father? It is so that I can showcase the heavenly father to my children. Hello, somebody. You know God is the ultimate father. Hello. God is what? The ultimate father. So, when God calls a man to the office of a father, his assignment is to show the children and the wife the picture of the heavenly father. When failure comes to that assignment, the seed most times will be ungodly seed. And many families are racing and perpetuating ungodly seed from generation to generation. That is the root of the problem of the society. That is the root of the evil of our world. All these criminals came from family. Yes or no? The kidnappers, are they angels from heaven? The Boko Haramist, are they angels from heaven? Is, is, is uh, Sambisa in heaven? 
Talk to me. All those who are involved in all kinds of crime, are they angels from heaven? They are product of a family. And they are ungodly seed. Ungodly seed will poison our world. Ungodly seed will destroy this world. Ungodly seed will make this world inhabitable. So, God wants to have a habitable world. God wants to have a peaceful world. How does he plan to do that? He raised a family with the assignment to raise and perpetuate godly seed. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? This was one critical understanding that God gave us. So I tell you, majority of the work that must be done, must be done in the family. Majority of the work. So young men and young women that are not yet married, the moment you begin to see marriage as a pleasure, you will fail. Marriage is not a pleasure. Marriage is an assignment. Somebody say assignment. Somebody say assignment. Because once you have the mentality of pleasure, you will lose the vision of purpose. You'll just be looking for a man to sleep with or a woman to sleep with and enjoy yourself. But you will lack the grace for the responsibility to take care of the fallout of your union. And then our world will be more complicated. I'm praying that God will bless your family such that you will be able to use your family as one of the families to use as a prayer point for the redemption of our world. In the name of Jesus. When godly seed are raised in the family, the future is secured. When godly seed are raised and perpetuated, the future is secured. How many of you have planted anything before? Or you have raised chicken before. You have reared goat before. You have done anything like that before. Let me see your hand. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you, is it pleasure to raise something? What is it? Talk to me. What is it? Not just work. Hard work. To raise something. Kicking in your yellow way. Is what? Hard work. This mentality of pleasure in the family is what is bringing the spirit of irresponsibility. Every time I walk home, I know I have a wife and I know I have children. I'm called back to responsibility. I remember my responsibility. Now listen to this. I know they will eat. I know they will go to school. I know they will, my wife will eat. My wife will look fine. I know, I know that. It reminds me of my responsibility. Now, beyond all that, I know my standing must bring a pattern to their spirit. I am aware of the influence of my example upon their life. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? And I, will, I know how disgraceful I will be to them if I mess up in the society outside. I want them to be proud of me as their father. I want them to look at me and honor me. I don't want to stand in a place and demand respect from them. I want, I want to live a life that command respect, that compel respect. I will not be the one that will tell my son, don't you know I'm your father? Respect me. I have never said it. I will never say it. But there is an aura of righteousness, aura of responsibility, aura of godly example that compel the young men to know that this is my father and I'm proud of him. That's how God planned it. That's what God taught me. I've never told my wife, don't you know I'm your husband? Never. I have grown and continue to grow to maturity. She saw something she could respect. She saw something she could honor. That is the secret of authentic submission. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Because if you say, well, I won't come for a long time, I'm not joking, a bit of lie of one, a roll of a ton of any. She, I want to come for a long time, I'm not joking for one. 
You see, Oti Beresi, if he mistake, had Oti Beresi, push along in a bad light. Some of us allow our mistake, we, we stand for us to agree with God and start afresh. We are, now, we, are now, we are now painting God in a bad light. Hello, somebody. Because human beings always look for excuses for their failure. Human beings always want to explain their problem away. Let us face it. The Bible says, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Only to repeat one pastor, ni madam, daddy pastor, ni daddy, mommy pastor, ni mommy. Oh, replay pastor to that we. Mumbere new. Emma dam me low now. Embino. Eh, see, relay pastor to that we. Eh, see, relay bishop to that we. So forget about it. God doesn't love anybody more than you. Listen to me. God loves you the same way he loves Jesus. God loves you what? The same way he loves Jesus. What is working for other people for good under God can work for you. The point is we must know the truth. We must practice the truth. And from the point at which we know the truth, let there be a positive turn around. Otherwise, we continue to walk in error and resolve to a negative fate. F-A-T-E. And say, well, that's how God wants it. That's not how God wants it. Are you hearing me now? That's not how God wants it. That's not how God wants it. So, to raise something is work. You have raised goat before. You have raised chicken before. If you are raising, I'm raising chicken now. <laughs> Praise God. If you are raising chicken, you will know you have to attend to them. You have to attend. Now, in the course of raising chicken, I have learned so many things. So my chickens don't die. They don't die. Apart from the grace of God upon them. Because my chicken are Zion chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we do everything with the anointing. But apart from that too, I subscribe to a particular person on Facebook. Very big poetry with correct information. And I begin to follow that information. There are many things I explain to my wife about when she has, I cleared it and she left, I cleared it and I say, okay, this is what to do. This is because of this. This is because of this. This is because of this. Are you hearing me now? Now, in raising chicken, I've learned to be proactive. Somebody say proactive. Somebody say proactive. Now, I don't wait for my chicken not to eat before I begin to do something. When they are no longer eating, you know something is wrong. If I don't wait until that time, I'm proactive. I'm just a step ahead. I'm just a step ahead. So you never see them falling sick. It takes time to raise things. It takes work to raise things. It's going to cost you something. To raise, to raise chicken, you have to spend some money. Yes or no? They will eat. Thank God for Mrs. Akintade. Every time I will call her, my chicken feed is finished to get me another one. Get me another one. It takes that. Now, I'm using raising a chicken to give you the understanding of raising a godly seed. Children don't just come out to be a godly seed. No. It's work. Somebody say it's work. I'm challenging you. It's work. So family is the means through which God intends to raise. You and God. God, 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 as a man and as a woman. When God brought the two of you together, he employed the two of you in his purpose. You are his hand. You are his leg to establish his purpose. It is not about you. It is about his what? His purpose. I will still together. And what is the assignment that he gave us? To raise godly seed. Do you know what? Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Every parent that is committed to raising a godly seed, you become the overall beneficiary of raising a godly seed. 
Because you are ensuring for yourself a future rest. When your seed are godly, your future will be filled with rest and peace. Yes or no? Will be filled with what? Rest and peace. So, when God say, walk with me, God is using that assignment to develop you. Number two, to give you rest and your future. You are the greatest beneficiary of a godly seed. You are the greatest beneficiary. Amen. I'm praying that your family will reflect the beautiful picture of God's plan. In the name of Jesus. When godly seed are raised and perpetuated, the future is secured and continuity is guaranteed. Do you know something? I'm going to read it for you in the scripture now. Godly seed are your weapons of war against the enemies. Godly seed are your weapons of war against the enemy. Godly seed are your weapons of war. Hello? Godly seeds are your what? Weapons of war against the enemy. They are your weapons of war. So every time you are raising your children as godly seed, you are developing a weapon of war against the enemy. So when we refuse to raise godly children, we are planning to be defeated because there will be no weapons to use in the battle of life. Look at Psalm 127. Psalm what? Psalm 127. I read from verse 3. The Bible says, Lo, children are what? An heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is what? Is his reward. As arrows. Somebody say as arrows. Are in the hand of a mighty man. So are what? Children of the youth. Happy is the man. What does the Bible say? Happy. 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 So, happy. Happy is the man that is quiver, that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be what? Ashamed. But they shall speak with the enemies in the game. Your godly seed are your answer to the future. Your answer to enemy. Are you with me now? Happy. Somebody say happy. Happy there means blessed, fortunate, to be envied. Is the man who had his quiver full of them. But the man that has his quiver empty of them. What is the meaning? What is the meaning? Sorrowful. That will not be your portion. Are you with me now? Amen? Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. So I wish everybody in every marriage or marriage service, wedding service that we conduct, when people are dancing and rejoicing, how I wish they are a full understanding of the work that is ahead of them. Are you hearing me now? A full what? Understanding. Somebody say a full understanding of the work that is ahead of them. This is a lazy generation that doesn't want to pay any price but want to enjoy every benefit. And beloved, it doesn't work that way. These are the understanding God gave us. And beloved, they help us tremendously. How many of you have saved before? How many of you have saved before? You have saved money before? Let me see your hand. You have saved money before? Good. Every time you save that money, do you feel you lose it? Do you feel you lose it? If I, sometimes you have to tone down your expenses so that you can have what? Savings. Am I correct? You tone down your expenses. Some of the things you wanted to have, you will not, you will not have it. You just tone it down. Tone it down. You are saving. You are saving. So every savings you make is not a sense of loss. Am I correct? Every time you raise godly seed, it is a savings for the future. Just as your saving is your security for the future, godly seed is your security for the future. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yo, ba ni omo ta oko ni o gbe ile ti a se kini ta kota. So you will know that you have an assignment under God. The reason why we have a lot of irresponsible fathers and mothers is because many people don't know the work that God is bringing you into by bringing you to a family. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And I'm praying that God is going to help you. So these are three basic understanding of the family that God gave myself and my wife. And in our 25 years of marriage, it has helped us. It has helped us. It has helped us never to be casual about our family, but to be covenant-minded, to be responsibility-minded, to, to have the mindset of commitment. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Very, very important. I want you to write down these questions. These questions will provoke you to understand them. Because every family will be healed when we come to see the see family the way God sees family. Every family will be healed. You know that God doesn't love anybody more than you. But you must follow the principles of God to get the best of God. Number one, where is your family involved in the purpose of God on the earth? Where is your family involved in the purpose of God on the earth? That's a serious question. If your family is not involved anywhere in the purpose of God, that's a family that will never have peace. Where? What is your family doing for the purpose of God? Where is your family involved in the purpose of God on the earth? Number two, can the unlimited operations of God be seen in your family? Can the unlimited operations of God be seen in your family? Some family, it is the operations of the spirit of the ancestry. One young man told me, he said, I can never say sorry to any, ma any woman. And I asked him, why? Even though he's in the church. He told me, I've never seen my father say sorry to my mother. So I felt I can never, it's part of man's dignity and pride, never to say sorry to any woman. That is the spirit of rebellion. That is the spirit that makes his ancestry to fail. And the devil wants to continue by that spirit. So you see in many families, you see the operations of the spirit of ancestry. I like Obeni. Why not like Obeni? Are you hearing me now? Baba and Jali, or not Jali? Baba and Man Luya, or not Luya Way? Why not Baba Lojo? Baba Lo exactly Baba Sherry Baba Lojo. You see the spirit of ancestry, not the operations of God. So the question is, can the unlimited operations of God be seen in your family? Those of you that you are not married, what kind of family do you want to have? A family that you can have the unlimited operations of God or a family that you have the repetition of the ancestral spirit? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I told myself I will never make the mistake that my parents made in marriage. Never. Never. They live their life in accordance with the knowledge available to them and the opportunities they have. In my time, I have the best of opportunity. Giving my life to Jesus at the age of 12. Beloved, I cannot fail. If my life is not better than that of my parents, then 
it is a disaster. Are you hearing me now? My father got born again at over 45. So it will be a, a complete insult for his marriage to be better than my marriage. Me that I got born again at 12. A man at 30 is already set. It's just like you are trying to break a concrete. But by the time Thomas she posts him, she has a very elevation to buy where you back up. To buy the gun. Allow me to call for. So when a man is 40, he's already said, it will take the redemptive power to change a man at 40. In fact, most men at 40 don't listen to correction again. That's why when you are a woman and you are trying to change your husband, you are you are calling for trouble. God didn't give you the assignment to change him. I'm going to talk about that shortly before I finally round up. You want to change him. You, you, want, you, want, you are wasting your time. You will cause yourself a lot of pain. Because there is this natural ego in a man. Especially men that are not born again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? My prayer is that for those of you that you are not married here, your life will be better than that of your parents. But listen to me. That is to the degree of your obedience to the word of God. If you don't obey the word of God, you will repeat the same mistake they made. In fact, your own will be worse. So when a pastor is standing in front of you teaching you the word of God, you are not doing that pastor a favor by listening to that word of God. You are doing yourself a what? A favor. You are giving yourself rest in the future. So don't buy pastor here. I'm pastor here. You come say my God. Oh, till late, oh till late, oh till late. Oh, till late. You better listen now. You better heed now. So the in in the end, by the end, to my wife's door, iru a hulo ra hue. Did you get what I'm saying now? Very, very important. The lady you will attract is a replica of who you are. The man you will attract is a replica of who you are. You cannot be ungodly and attract a godly man. No, it is ungodly people that will be coming. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So I looked at my parents' life by the standard of the scripture. I discovered that there are some mistakes in their life. In fact, my, my father used to tell us that, look, the mistake I make in marriage, I know will haunt me till my grave. And that's the truth. And what? And that's the truth. So I told myself, never again. Did you hear what I say? Never again. And it's not just an empty mouth. Backed up with work, action, sacrifice. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So that the unlimited operations of God will be seen in our family. The second question is, can the unlimited operation be seen in your work, in your family? Or will we will be seeing the manifestations of the spirit of your ancestry? When my father was not born again, anytime he's coming home, in fact, there was a day, listen to me, are we together? There was a day, I, I, I think I told you before, let me say it again. If I have not told you, maybe you will hear it for the first time. There was a day I prayed that God will make him travel and never come back. Because he was tormenting us. And I was a small boy. Every time he comes, I lose my appetite. When my father come, he, said he was a terrorist that time. Ah, daddy ole wale kile wala lafia, bobo le madaruni. And even our mother, you will not escape the beating. There was a day I was drinking Gary in the afternoon. I came from school. I was drinking Gary. I was still drinking that Gary and enjoying it. When I heard the sound of his motorcycle that he came, I had stomach upset. Immediately I went to the toilet and I lost my appetite because I knew 
problem is here. And from that time, that time I was still young. I will never have a family like this. That when I am coming, my wife will come out to come and embrace me with joy. They will be looking forward to my coming in. That I will be a blessing to my wife and to my children. That is my decision. Now, when I now came to know Jesus Christ, I received the power and the grace to practice that decision. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not a man that will just come in and everybody will, uh, uh, no. But that time, he wasn't born again. And the moment he gave his life to Jesus, that was why the change, the transformation was evident. In fact, I went to him. My father was a terrible drunkard. Have you seen a man taking 36 bottles of harp on a sitting? 36. What did I say? One, two, three, four, five, 36 bottles on a sitting. And they blow champagne together in Island Club, Ikoyi, Lagos. And he took his motorcycle and drove home. If I continue in that line, how many bottles will I be taking? But thank God, that is not the operations in my own family. We are taking the bottles of the Holy Ghost. The wine of heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You now see, it, 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 you see what God planned. That it will be getting better in the next generation. Getting better in the next generation. So nobody can see me stagger. No. no. I've never tasted beer in my life. Nobody can see me stagger and say, like, mm -hmm. if I am drunk, I am drunk of the Holy Ghost. I am drunk of the Word of God. So you see, by that, you will see in my lineage, the issue of alcohol is dead forever. Because no son or daughter of, that come from my loin we do what he didn't see me do. So you discover that family is about the perpetuation of the purpose of God now. Not just my name, but his purpose. One day I saw my father, told my mother to kneel down. I'm telling you what I saw. What then no? Like that. Ah! I look at that man. I feel I should kill him. But I was a small boy. Don't wait. Don't because you are not making their mother happy. They don't like you. Any opportunity they have to be free from your control, they will deal with you. Are you hearing me now? Especially the male, the male child. Ha! There is an affinity between a male child and their mother. I don't know if you know it, but me, I know it. There is an affinity between a male child and the mother. So, you are the champion. Every champion has a day of expiration. I'm telling you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So, I hated it. How can somebody be beating my mother? I hated, but there was nothing I could do. So I didn't like it. So when he became born again, uh -uh, he now came, he used to come in very, he, he, will, he will not come in in the night again. Comes. No bottles of beer under our bed. Uh 
I want I want go ti to tu wa la be be di wa to ti to ti maybe bu si be Olorun lo mo yi e ah ko la le sala ma lo ti la be be but ko wa si yen mo No beer no alcohol in the fridge And I see my father will be reading bible ah One morning if I, the the one that impressed me the most was when he went to the bathroom after taking his bath he got water for my mother and he called him back obi eti wa be mo ti be go mi si be mo fu bo mi fu mo no si o to wa e ko ma ni do mi gbono for the first time i saw it i knew, i said this man is sick only man ni ti daru ara e ya o only problem did you hear me now as small as i was i was the boldest out of my father's children so i went to him i said daddy are you sick he said no I said, yes. he said, what, what did you see? Only Kilori, to vuro pe ala mi o ya. Kilori, mo ni, ah, eh, eh, sheba e wole mo. Eh, no mo mi mo. Eh, tu wa lok mo mi fu mo pe kon wela aroi. She, she wa okay. <laughs> that was what I meant that time. But I asked him, are you sick? I knew I spoke in English. Are you sick? Because mo wo pe, he must be sick. That is to tell you where we were coming from. And he told me, he said, I am not sick. In fact, this is the time I am well. But now, I met a man that spoke to me. I said, ah, where is the man? Take me to the man so that I can go and thank him. For talking to you because I saw in my father a beast that nobody can talk to. Are you hearing me now? So I wanted to go and thank the man and he said okay, don't worry. On Monday we will go there. And I followed him. That was how I followed him to a redeemed Christian church of God, a Butemeta, where Pastor Kumuyi was having Bible study every Monday that time. We were there. I sat down. I was waiting for the man to come so I can thank him. I was waiting for the man to come. I was naive as a young boy now. And then when it was time, I saw the choristers. They were singing. They were singing chorus. And I, I thought, this is church now. Church. Are you hearing me now? But after some time, Pastor Kumi just came up. And then he began to preach. He began to preach. He began to preach. After he made the altar call. Are you... And then, and then my father told me, you see that man talking? The man that spoke to me is inside him. His name is Jesus. That was how I began to talk to me about Jesus. That was the starting point of my development. And a few years later, at 12, I gave my life to Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Supposing there was no that encounter in his life, what would have happened? Our own would have been more. Can you kill me, my little Benny Kiri? Share my way, it should have been in your apple. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Tabiki Mamoti? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. So that's the beginning. That's the beginning of the transformation. So when your seeds are godly, there is a future for you. Now, assuming somebody like me was not born again, many of you saw the end of my dad. Yes or no? Was it a beautiful ending or a bad ending? Are you hearing me now? How will it have been? If he had continued with the devil and continue with sin. Are you with me now? I'm praying for you that in your own family there will be a stoppage to any ancestral spirit. From today there will be unlimited operations of God. Sin in your family. Unlimited operations of God. Unlimited operations of God. Did you hear what I say? Unlimited operations of God. Unlimited operations of God. Number three. Are you experiencing blessing? Fruitfulness? 
multiplication, replenishing, and dominion. Are you experiencing fruitfulness, blessing, multiplication, replenishing, and dominion? Because that's what God wants to establish by setting up a family. Those of you who are single, you should be looking forward to a family where you will experience blessing, fruitfulness, multiplication, replenishing, and dominion. That should be your first consideration before you begin to talk about his tall, dark, and handsome. Before you begin to talk about his shape, figure, all this figure, figure, figure cannot guarantee these blessings. Number four. Are godly seeds being raised and perpetuated from generation to generation in your family? Are godly seeds being raised and perpetuated from generation to generation in your family? Every family that is not raising and perpetuating godly seed is a bad contributor to our society. Is a bad contributor, a negative contributor to the world. Have you seen a university that is raising half-baked half -baked, half -baked graduates? That their graduates are nothing to write home about in the labor market? That's exactly, in fact, the, 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 such universities, their graduates become more damaged. They do more damage to the society. The same thing in the family. Oh, ni bi ole lomo. Oh, ni bi jaguda lomo. Oh, ni bi kidnappa lomo. The children will catch our example more than our words. Are you hearing me now? My children are grown up now. They know the same thing I preach in the church. It's the same thing I do at home. They know they are adults now. They know if daddy is lying. They know if mommy is pretending. They know we don't have a double life. What we do in church is what we do at home. Some of my associates are very close to me. So they, they see our life. They know that it's nothing fake in this thing. And it all comes at a price. So are godly seeds being raised and perpetuated from generation to generation? I'm praying that your family will contribute godly seed to this generation. Number five. What are you passing down to the next generation? I'm going to stop here. Next week, I thought I would be able to do two things today. But I'm doing one now. I hope you are blessed. Now next week, I will take the next one. God's goal for your family. There are nine of them that God showed us in 25 years of marriage. There are nine goals that God wants to fulfill in your marriage, in your family. Nine. And I'm praying you will give room for him to do that in your family. How many of those goals? Nine. I'm going to share that next week by the grace of God. It's part of our silver, uh, silver jubilee celebration. 25 years. In 25 years, I should be able to come to you and say, this is what we have learned. This is what God has taught us. This is what made the difference in our lives. Are you hearing me now? God didn't love us better than he loves you. God loves us the same way he loves Jesus. But I hope somebody is going to learn something. Did you hear me? What are you passing down to the next generation? What? What? Every father, every mother here, Let's ask ourselves, what are we passing down to the next generation? What are we passing down to the next generation? God has taught myself and mommy, we are more conscious of what we pass down to our children than the food we eat. Than the food we eat, we are more conscious of what we pass down to them. If we behave like this in their presence, what does it imply to them? How would they interpret it? What would they think that is for? Because we know God is going to hold us responsible. Not just for what we preach in church, but the example we lay before people at home and everywhere. We are going to give account of the examples of our lives. Are you hearing me now? I have never raised my hand to beat my wife. 
Not one time. Not one day. Not one day. They have never gathered to settle any issue for us. In fact, we have no issue to settle. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? We have no issue to settle. When we got married, we put the Bible in between us. We said, this is our final court of appeal. This is our final court of appeal. Bible. This is the Bible. We put Bible in between ourselves. We say, this story wait, wait, is our final court of what? Of appeal. We, we weigh every action based on the revelation of this world. If I am, if I am wrong, I will, be, I, will tell, I will apologize to you. If you are wrong, you apologize to me. No ego. Did you hear me? No pride. Are you hearing me now? No pride. Whatever wisdom you have seen us manifest, demonstrate, is the wisdom of the word of God. It's the wisdom. When you know the word of God, you'll be wiser than your years. You'll be wiser than your age. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If I want to do anything, we secure cooperation. I don't do anything my wife does not support me. Because the Bible says, if two of you shall what? Agree. So when there is no agreement, you are defeated. When there is no agreement, you are what? You are defeated. There is no secret that my wife doesn't know. Not one. Are you hearing me now? So to ban sorrow, uh, mommy for me, it's a mistake. To ban sorrow for me, for me, it's a mistake. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. I got a, I got a phone, and they were when they were doing based on law that when, when I just put the phone like this, what died in my face, it will unlock. Are you hearing me now? So when they were talking, my wife said they should also put her face. One lady was there, said, ah, mommy, ah, ah, she before no daddy ni, she before no daddy ni. Two lady, she for the money I owe, I for the money are you hearing me now there is no pin code that I have in this world that she does not know there is no pin code because the Bible says two shall become one flesh are you hearing what I'm saying now that's the kind of family that God raised we are reducing our defenses when we are working so low we are reducing our defenses are you hearing what I'm saying now? I shared several wisdom with you. There is nothing I have with any woman, any woman, directly. No. My wife will be the one I will send. I will never have anything directly with any woman. My wife will be the one I will send. If I want to help a woman, I will send it through my wife. If I cannot send it through my wife, that is the woman I will never help. Are you hearing me now? Did you hear what I said? Very, very important. So I'm asking you, what are you going to pass down to the next generation? Because either we like it or not, the next generation is watching us. The next generation is watching us. Are you hearing me now? Except God will rise up and do something. The next generation is near lost. I'm telling you. This is a generation that doesn't want to walk again. They don't want to go to school again. Can you imagine? Teachers will enter class to teach the student. The student will say, excuse me, you come again? In our day, we pursue teacher to come and teach us. Because they know either they read or they don't read, they will get the uh, expo for, for the exam and they will cheat. And most parents today are thieves and their children know that they are thieves. And these are the days that even the politicians have destroyed everything. They have told us it doesn't pay to be righteous. They have told you can forge a result. You can cheat and still be on top. That is the evil lesson they are teaching the next generation. That's why our world will never have peace until family get back to purpose. So what are you passing that? I want you to write this down. 
What are you passing down to the next generation? Wisdom of foolishness. Wisdom of foolishness. Those of you who are not married, ask yourself, what, are, what do I intend to pass down to the next generation? That's how you put that question. Wisdom of foolishness. Me, I have taken a decision, I will pass wisdom. In 25 years of marriage, God has helped us to pass wisdom down to the next generation. Not only to our biological children, but to all the children that God has brought to us to pass wisdom down. Number two, wealth or poverty. What are you going to pass down to the next generation? Wealth or poverty. Wealth or poverty. Wealth or poverty. There is nothing I have that I cannot explain how I got it. There is no money I have that I cannot explain how I got it. I don't take what does not belong to me and my children know. We must pass down the wealth of contentment, the value of hard work, the value of discipline, the value of integrity, that we don't steal, we don't cheat, we don't take what does not belong to us. That's wealth that we must pass to the next generation. Number three, blessing or cause. What are you passing to the next generation? Blessing or cause. Blessing or cause. You have to be intentional. It's not just about that. God help me to pass blessing. Be intentional that you are going to pass blessing down. Number next, fear of God or rebellion against God. Which one are you passing across? Is it the fear of God or rebellion against God? Which one are you passing across? Which one are you passing across? Are you with me? Number next, divine encounter or demonic oppression. Divine encounters or demonic oppression. Every time I read the Bible, any revelation I get, my wife is the first person to share in my revelation. Then I share with my children. That's divine encounters. Are you passing divine encounter or you are passing demonic oppression down to them? Number next, possibilities in God or impossibilities in the world. Which one are you passing across to the next generation? Hello? Hello? Which one are you passing across to the next generation? The truth of God or the lies of men? The truth of God or the lies of men? Which one are you passing across to the next generation? Which one are you passing across to the next generation? The revelations of God or the traditions of men? The revelations of God or the traditions of men? Which one are you passing to the next generation? Which one are you passing to the next generation? Spirit of discipline, diligence, and integrity. Or spirit of frivolity and indulgence and indiscipline. Which one are you passing across? Which one are you passing to the next generation? Faith in God or empty dependence on man? The Bible says, Woe is anyone that trusts man, that make a man who has his, his spirit in his nostrils his, his rock. He said, Blessed is he that trusts in the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Which one are you passing across? Empty dependence on man or faith in God? Faith in God. Which one are you passing across? Now, I want you to write down Psalm 78. From verse 1 to 7, we're going to read it and then we'll pray. Psalm 78 from verse 1 to 7 and write down Psalm 44 verse 1 to 8. Well, let's start with Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Are we there? Are we there? Psalm 78 from verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our words. Our word. Talk to me, oh. 
our fathers have what? Have told us. I want to pray for all fathers here. You will not be a silent father. You will be a speaking father. You will have a message to tell your children. You will be able to tell your children about God. Our fathers have what? Have told us. Our what? Our fathers have told us. Verse 4. We will not hide them from their children. Showing the generation to come the praises of the Lord. I pray that will be your pursuit from now on. That you will show the generation to come the praises of the Lord. And his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he has established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers. Why did he command our fathers? That they should make them know to their children. You, your, you, every father here, stand up. You are a father, stand up. Either grandfather or father or great great grandfather, whatever. If you, are, if you have anything to do with father, stand up. I'm praying for you that you will not contract your responsibility to another person. What God wants you to do to your children, no teacher in the world can do it for them. You are the one that will primarily instruct your children. You are the one that should primarily instruct your children, not a teacher. Well, I want to teach you, say that. What have you done yourself? I'm praying that you will not fail God. That you will be able to tell them about God. Your children are waiting to know God from you. To know God through you. You must have a testimony to share with them. Father will connect us to the future by their training. May the Lord help you. Sit down. I told a grandfather, a grandfather, to be a while and come on much in button. A grandfather told she be a mother. A grandfather told she be a real boy. Don't come as you don't come on my button up. That's yeah, yeah, see. A whole grandfather into a come on say come by it here, Korea Kwa. I took call to be Lucywa. And I speak to that that when I look at his children, I I know why the reason don't feel like her. You cannot give what you don't have. Any one of you that knows me knows that when it comes to family, I'm extra passionate. Because I have seen family ruin their future because of their carelessness. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? A grandfather that I'm teaching how to, how to button up and he's still annoyed with me. <laughs> our fathers have told us what are you telling your children I will read verse 5 again for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers why? that they should make them known to their children verse 6 Nabi, that the what to come my what might know them. Even the children which will be born, who should arise and declare them to their what? To their children. What are the things? Verse 7. That they might what? Set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandment. Ladies, stand up. Ladies, you are not married, stand up. You are not married, stand up. What you should be looking at in a man to marry is a man that has a testimony to share with the next generation. A man that has a testimony, that has an encounter with God, that he has something to tell the next generation. Don't be looking for third dark answer. Third dark answer. Most of them are tall, dark handsome. You are looking for a tall devil. You are looking for a dark demon. And you are looking for a handsome Satan. Are you hearing me now? Only God knows the damage that tall, dark, and handsome people have done to the life of ladies. I want to let man say tell you, move for come here, go do do, go handsome. I want let man say, do the need Jesus, you bati yeye. He will waste you, abuse you. But what you should be looking for is a man that has the fear of God, and a man that will have a fear of God to share with the next generation. 
o le ma lowo lowo leni but eru olorun fear of god ma mu prosperity wa but prosperity cannot bring the fear of god is somebody hearing me now some of your mothers didn't have the benefit of the teaching like this are you hearing me now but you have that benefit now i pray it in your need sit down did you get what i'm saying now praise god look at psalm 44 From verse 1 to 8. I hate to see family suffer. I hate to see the purpose of God defeated in a family. I hate to see husband and husband that are not working in unity. I hate to see family disunited. I hate it. And that's why every time I'm privileged to teach this truth, I teach with all my heart. That's the only way we can save the next generation. Psalm 44, verse 1. We have heard with our ears, O oh God, our word. Shem, Bobai, our word. So if our fathers have nothing to tell us, we have nothing of God to hear. That's the meaning. If our fathers have nothing to tell us, we have nothing of God to hear. Our fathers have told us. What did they tell us? What work thou didst in their days, in the times of old? What is your age? Only I'm 19. I will be, I will be. Only I'm 19. Oh, sit, go sit, go sit, go sit, at 19. At 19, I have been leading a whole church. At 19. I have been leading a whole church. I will do a complete service for church at 19. I will start the service for them. I will do Sunday school for them. I will preach like I'm preaching today. I preach to them. What I went by Baba Mimbe at 19. What if you did just see for me at 19? I'm challenging you. What are you doing? What are you using your teenage years to do? I've become my cartoon. I've become my Facebook. I've become my pornographic something. At 19, I've been dealing with a church. And I look at that boy at 19. And I was crying. Because I knew at 19, I'd be handling a church. I was a deacon at 19. I was a deacon in the church. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So those of us that say, I'm a day one, one, tick, one. Is that one, one? I'm a day one. At life, you know, they say a fool at 40 is a fool forever. If you read the scripture, you will know a fool at 12 is a fool forever. Jesus at the age of 12 has started his ministry. He was reasoning and talking to the doctors of the law at 12. At 12. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Let me stop at that. I want all women to stand up. I've discovered this is the major problem of most women. And the day you stop doing this, you will be free. And God will do his work in your life. Listen to me. No woman can control or dominate a man in marriage. No woman. What did I say? What did I say? No woman. Those of you who are becoming grandparents, tell your daughters. They must never travel that road. No woman. No woman. To be able to control a man in marriage, Are you hearing me now? Praise God. No woman can control a man in marriage. You will always be a loser when you travel that road. Ofe ma control e. Ofe ma control e. Into ba sofun ofe ko she. Ofe ko she nkan mi. Ah. Into ye ko she ni pe ko odi alagbara lori e kon re. Did you hear me now? Did you hear me? Jeki ni. Je alagbara lori bo. Lori e kon e. Don't. 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 Don't command him around. You. You will. You will provoke. The rebellious nature in the heart of a man. When you command him. Okay. Don't attempt to control him. Don't attempt to dominate him. 
Every attempt to control a man, to dominate a man by a woman in marriage is the easiest access to witchcraft. It's the easiest access to satanic deception. That's why you see some women, let me, I don't want one come so bad for one I have ballet. I ya want my only da. I'm telling you this so that you can tell your daughters. Torin don't share like your day on any year. I need to go to the house. I need to go to the house. I need to go If you do that. Because that is not God. What did I say? That's not God. That's not God. You will lose the man if you are trying to control him. You will lose the man if you are trying to dominate him. God didn't say you should control him. He told you to submit to him and love, submit to him. Some of us don't know how to address our husband. You address your husband as if he's your maid. Some of you will talk to your husband. You are giving your husband, your children, a bad image of a father. Do it. Don't let your children hear. They don't need that news. You want to call someone school? Want need the news here? Keep it to yourself. It's your cup of tea. Did you hear me? I'm speaking in my office as a father this afternoon. Do not, do not destroy the life of your children because of your own because of your own uh, challenges. Why people want to call on that so I'm on school? My badua, ti 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 ko kolo unba eh? Koko sa ko eni nuko ma shoji she? It's not for you to sit down your children and say so. My kwe ba ba yo sanwo ni emi kolo. You are going to cry in the future. I tell you this because ni ba ti gudu ba eba ma ja ori elo ma ja leo. Is a wisdom. Are you hearing me now? Is wisdom. Don't ever conduct yourself in a manner that gives the man impression that you want to control him or dominate him. Your real weapon is godly influence. What is your real weapon? Godly influence through godly submission. What did I say? Godly influence through godly submission. What did I say? Godly influence through godly submission. What did I say? Godly influence through godly submission. Every woman, I beg you, give your husband the place of honor. My wife will. My wife never had an answer until I returned. She will say, "Ejeki Daddy Day," even though she has an idea of what to do. Are you hearing me? She will say, "Odi Bati Daddy Ba Day, Ti Daddy Ba Day, Amon Kanta Mashi." Even though she may have an idea of what to do, only idea idea to a grandma papa papa show, but she will not say, okay, 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 eh, eh, jaka she ti to come back the mass of no, don't do that. If you talk about the jewelry, when you check in, when you tell him, when you tell him, very very important. Only who just go along, shuma is your head. Let all our women, any any yau lori re thirteen the grandma, let let us stand in Zion. As a strong place to train our daughters. I want more work. Coco, you want to know a court of ball. I want to train them. I want to do to train them. Are you hearing me now? May you qualify as a mother in Zion. May you qualify as a mother to the next generation. In the name of Jesus. Give your husband, number one, the place of honor. What did I say? 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 The place of honor. Tobanja shegun makwe ni shegun. It is a disgrace. Shegun wambi, shegun wambi, shegun wambi. I like kolon jebe. Wa uru kogi difun. My love. My head. My honey. My lord. My sweetheart. Ayeti da yebe. Did you get what I'm saying now? If I mo prefer, jibo yaza kwe, baba yon fe. If I mo, if I, let you all look over, je leti mi. When my wife look and say, Oni, you know, 
Baba, be on your phone call. Did you get what I'm saying now? Praise God. Get a name. That is where honor starts. What did I say? That's where honor starts. Onje, tojue lasiko. She tonje lasiko. You see? Attend to your husband with honor. Give him honor. Headship. Give him headship in everything. What did I say? What did I say? Give him headship in everything. In everything. Don't make decision until he returns. Don't make decision until he returns. Did, that, did you hear what I say? One bonjour koelo at Iruari. Shubon fisi aye tolo on fisi. Olori lolo on fisi. Fisi aye ye. Ole bonjulo. Man lo bonto bonjulo against her. Use it to help him. Give him the place of headship. Give him the place of headship in everything. Let him know that he is your head. Let your family know that he is your head. Let your friends know that he is your head. Act like that. Act. Don't just say it. Act like that. My bedjo koe lo You are causing trouble for yourself. Did you hear what I say? Tori bati jaba ma parira ne yime jeji. I want to ali o le ever forgive we lai lai. No, to le ninto she ti o da no da tu o lai tu alo sodi nu itara. Eh, chama kato she, chama kato she, chama. I ja i ja kwazi a woman apro pari. Chumbo ba ya I want to tisa funko. Oji ena ma fu walk away. Are you hearing me now? Act like that. Let your friend know. Let your family know. Let everybody know that your husband is your what? Your head. Defer to him. What did I say? Defer to him. What did I say? Defer to him. Defer to him. Defer to him. Defer to him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you blessed today? Let everybody rise up. Ileti Jesu bambe. Ile ayoni, ile ayoni, ile ayoni, ile ti Jesu bambe, ile ayoni, ile ayoni, ile ti Jesu bambe, ile ayoni. Ile ayoni, ile ayoni, ile ti Jesu bambe, ile ayoni, ile ayoni. I want you to talk to the Lord. Lord, take over my family. Take over my family. Take over my family. Let your will be done in my family. Open your mouth and pray. Talk to the Lord. Those of you that you are not, not married, I want you to commit your family to the hands of God. That the Lord will guide you, the Lord will teach you. Those of us that we are grandparents, I want us to commit the family of our children to the hand of the Lord. That their family will be better than our own family. That they will know God. That's the summary of the story. They will know God. They will know God. That's the beginning of success. Young people pray that my family will be a divine contribution to the society. Those of us who are married and we are in marriage, let's ask that the Lord will, will help us. Our family, the will of God will be done in our family. As from today, there will be a positive turnaround. The blood of Jesus will wash away all our mistakes. As from today, we we'll receive grace to be alive to our responsibility. To follow the word of God and have a great family. A great family is possible. Let the blessing of the Lord rest upon you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Put your hand on your chest. I'll pray for you. There is a grace that flows. I told you when we are starting that this teaching is for grace impartation. And everything I've spoken, God knows is the truth. And I ask that the spirit of grace that comes with the truth will go with this word. And every pronouncement will find expression. Positive, anointed, covenant expression. 
in the life of every man, every woman, and every family. In the name of Jesus. Let the anointing for a great family, let it rest upon you. Anointing for a great family. Let it rest upon every family here. Let there be a positive turnaround. A difference. A positive difference in our family. A total change completely. Every mistake, let the mercy of God begin to take care of them. Ori ofe, la ti shi atun shi. Ti i yi pa da to, to yo fi wani dile wa, ko so kale fwe ne koka. We will not just hear this and then forget about it. Let it be a word that will be practiced, obeyed, applied for the blessings to manifest in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that even after this service, you will hear the voice of God in our spirit. Every time, even in our family, before we do anything, before we take anything, you will always remember this truth in the name of Jesus. I bring every man under the power of the Holy Ghost that you will be an anointed head. You will not be an empty head. You will not be a useless head. You will be a purposeful leader, an anointed head, a godly head to your family. If there is anything you are doing today that is undermining your godly authority, I ask that the Lord will forgive and the Lord will anoint you with fresh insight and wisdom to be all that God wants you to be. That every man will be an anointed cover for their wives and for their children. Every man will be an anointed covering for their family. In the name of Jesus, our men will grow in the Lord. Our men will grow in the faith. Our men will know God. Our men will have encounters with God. Our men will have testimony to share with their wife and children. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus for the forgiveness and the remission of every sin. All the mistakes of the past is hereby taken out. Let a new season begin. Let a new day start in our family that our husbands will become an example of Jesus. Our husband will be a picture of God in the family. In the name of Jesus. You men, the Lord will be your sufficiency. I speak blessings over you, the work of your hand. I speak blessing over your business, over your work, over your career. In the name of Jesus. You will everything required to be the head over your family. The Lord will supply. The wisdom, the Lord will supply. The grace, the Lord will supply. The money, the Lord will supply. The good health, the Lord will supply. In the name of Jesus. I pray for all our women here. The Lord will remember you for good. He will remember your labor. He will remember your consistency. He will remember all your suffering, your sacrifices, and your assistance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That is giving you concern. I ask for divine intervention now. Ah, divine intervention. Divine intervention. That our children shall be godly seed. Our children shall be a blessing to their generation. In the name of Jesus. I pray our children, they will be hooked up with the choice of God for their life. Yala lokun eta bi lobirin awon omo wa oni gbegbe kugbe. A o ni ni idamu lori won lojo ale. Won ni fota soko. Won ni fota se yawo. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will guide them. The Lord will guide them. The Lord will direct them. Eni gbogbo awa ta bi omo obirin eni to ma joko fa won omo e a jo mo fun e A fe ran e gan jo mo ti e gan lo Gbogbo awa ta bi omo okunrin eni to ma je iyawo fa won omo e a je omo fun e 
fẹran yen gan ju bi awon omo yen se fẹran yen lo won ni gbe egun elegun won ni fe jezibeli in the name of jesus let the spirit of grace take over our family our family will be the expression of divine plan our family will be a channel of the establishment of the purpose of god our family will perpetuate the purpose of God progressively from generation to generation. Our family will be a channel to raise and perpetuate godly seed. We will have rest. Thank you, Father. We we'll give you praise. We we'll give you glory. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Are you blessed at all? It is well with you. In Jesus' name.